UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and his US counterpart, President Joe Biden, have unveiled the Atlantic Declaration to strengthen economic ties between the two countries. The two leaders unveiled the declaration at a White House press conference as the pair unveiled their partnership to bolster economic security while describing the UK-US relationship as an indispensable alliance. PM Shunak uh, has pushed to strengthen uh, trade ties between Britain and the United States. Keen to show some progress after the Biden administration quashed many uh, speedy prospects of a post-Brexit free trade agreement between the two countries. And joining me live from the United Kingdom is an investment and financial advisor, uh, Mr. Benga Ogurinola. Mr. Benga, thank you so much. It's good to have you on the program. Mr. Ogurinola, are you there? All right, well, let's take a break and we'll connect to Mr. Ogunyola and get talking. Don't go away. Well, both Thank countries, you. that's the United Kingdom and U.S., seems to have a long relationship. Uh, during my research, you see that most United States companies are located in the U.K. and they also have vice versa. But looking at that meeting between the two leaders, what is your takeout from it? Yes, uh, I think it's... Uh one of uh, those agreements that uh, is long overdue and um, it's going to be very beneficial for the two countries. Uh, they are one of the superpowers in the world and um, they've uh, had a lot of uh, bilateral agreements and cooperation in uh, other areas like in, the, in, in defense, for example. Uh, they also have some uh, arrangement put in place in the area of economy. But uh, the, this particular arrangement, uh, which they call the new uh, Atlanta, Atlantic Treaty Agreement, is going to um, strengthen the economic ties that, that the two countries have uh, between them. And I believe that uh, going forward, uh, it will deepen the economy, particularly the United Kingdom economy, uh, which is uh, uh, relatively smaller when we compare to the, to, to the United States economy. But uh, in the long run, it's going to be something that is beneficial to the two countries. Looking at their major exports here, we have machinery, financial and travel services, agricultural products, uh, wine, beer. Uh, what would you say about exports and imports between both countries? Yes, uh, like you said earlier in your introduction, um, the supply chain, uh, system of the two countries, one area that um, uh, this particular agreement covers, and uh, it says that it's going to boost uh, the existing supply chain and help in those uh, critical areas where they need uh, uh, to, 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 be, to be helped. And I believe that uh, with all the various um, companies that uh, are located in these two countries, there will be a lot of uh, movements, and uh, this is going to cause um, a relatively increase in uh, productivity, increase in, um, in the workforce, is going to uh, kind of really deepen the economy generally. And I believe that uh, in the long run, um, the two countries would uh, be better off for it. Mm. And in extension, it's also going to affect some other European countries too. But we now see that movement to clean energy, to um, IT, technical issues, commercial uh, and trade relations. Uh, let's look at the focus now on clean energy and artificial intelligence around these two countries. Uh, what positives yeah. do you see in all of this? Yeah, so the United Kingdom uh, are trying as much as possible to place themselves in uh, the leadership role in uh, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And uh, they want to use that as one major way to uh, drive the economy of the United Kingdom. And uh, with this agreement coming in place, I mean, there's been so much talk about artificial intelligence in the last couple of uh, weeks and months, you know, in terms of uh, regulations concerning um, that particular industry and ensuring that um, the, the, the there's no threats to humanity in itself, you know, with the high scale of uh, uh, recent uh, development and breakthroughs in uh, artificial intelligence. 
And so uh, the United Kingdom is uh, kind of pushing, positioning itself, you know, to be one of the uh, major stakeholders in artificial in intelligence, uh, coupled with also the aspect that um, most uh, countries in the world today are looking at uh, uh, the issue of uh, climate change, uh, clean uh, air, clean uh, environments to ensure sustainability, um, not, not just looking at the technology aspect of it, but also looking at uh, ensuring sustainability uh, in terms of the climate and the environment itself. So a, a combination of the two, I know these two countries are, are kind of uh, trying to champion this uh, cause uh, when it comes to uh, world economy generally. And that is why we see a lot of uh, changes and uh, development in the area of um, hybrid vehicles, hybrid technologies where uh, raw energy or uh, energy that uh, causes pollution is, eventually, is gradually being eradicated even in most uh, uh, developed world. You know, the last time we spoke, a lot of developments around the UK, then strikes and some economic slowdown that obviously we saw uh, at that time. Uh, can you bring us up to speed with developments around the economy uh, in recent times? Some countries are gradually getting back to pre-COVID levels. What is happening in the UK? Yes, I think uh, the United Kingdom too is uh, actually <clears throat> benefiting from what is happening globally in the area of um, uh, things getting back to normal. Uh, we, we see inflation rates in recent uh, uh, months reducing gradually. Uh, re the, the most recent inflation uh, figures is about uh, 8.7. Uh, and of course, we had it, I think the last time we spoke, it was in the region of uh, about 10.1. So we see uh, the inflation coming down. Uh, we also see uh, the uh, workforce, you know, also expanding. And uh, that has also kind of helped in deepening the economy. And um, uh, even though the interest rates for most of these economies are still on the high side compared to what they used to be, but I believe that uh, uh, in recent times, we'll begin to see even the interest rates also uh, coming down gradually. But uh, generally, I, I believe that uh, most of the economies are beginning to be stable and uh, they are beginning to see uh, a more fruitful result of some of the plans and uh, uh, policies that they had put in place to checkmate the high rate of inflation and uh, living costs generally. Uh, what is Mr. Sunak doing differently in your thoughts that is making the economy kind of react so positively uh, at this time, despite the challenges, particularly from the workforce and all of, uh, all of that? Well, I think he has been able to bring some level of stability mm. to the economy and to the polity generally. Uh, last year was a turbulent year in the United Kingdom, uh, politically and also in Europe generally with the Russian-Ukraine war, uh, which triggered so many things. Uh, it triggered a lot of rise in uh, cost of living, it triggered a uh, high cost of energy, and uh, of course, most economies were still uh, battling and grappling with uh, the uh, COVID uh, lockdown and they were just resuming before they entered into uh, the, the, the face of or the war between Russia and uh, Ukraine. So now we are seeing some level of stability, which uh, generally uh, has come over time and uh, the, the, the economy in itself, you know, response to stability and peace. And uh, that's what we are seeing in the United Kingdom. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, the prime minister has also been able to uh, win some uh, level of uh, confidence also among various stakeholders in the polity. And that has uh, uh, helped the economy in achieving stability and progress. Mm. Uh, Mr. Gunnar, let's talk around stocks now. Let's start with global stocks. And seeing the stability that you're saying we're experiencing in the UK, uh, the markets have been fairly, well, flip-flop uh, on both sides. Uh, you take us through uh, what you say. What are you telling investors at this time? Well, uh, in the last couple of uh, <coughs> weeks, months, uh, we've had uh, more stability. And uh, generally, 
if we look at uh, the um, global capital market, we'll see that uh, there's been some consistent rise, you know, in the uh, year-to-date uh, figures. For example, starting from Nigeria, you notice that uh, from the last time we spoke to now, we've had some very reasonable rise in our year-to-date. Uh, a lot of uh, stocks are doing well, particularly the high volumes, I mean, the high cap stocks in the Nigerian uh, context. And we see other countries also falling in the uh, Nigerian capital market. We've had about over 13% year, year, year to date. Uh, in, in the United Kingdom, the capital market has not been too buoyant. Uh, it's struggling. Uh, we've not had up to even a 1% uh, year to date uh, currently, uh, even though it was above that uh, in the course of the year. But uh, currently, it's less than 1%. Uh, but other markets uh, like uh, the United States, the Nasdaq is on uh, over 30 percent. Uh, the S&P over 14 percent. Dow Jones is struggling this year, uh, but those other two uh, exchanges have uh, actually recorded very significant figures, and uh, we can only hope that uh, it will get better as the year progresses. Uh, in other big economies like uh, the German economy, the France economy, day to they've had two-digit figures yet in date, which is also encouraging. Uh, so generally, we are seeing uh, stability in the global capital market, and uh, we are seeing interest rates uh, still rising. But uh, a, a lot of talk about, uh, you know, uh, stopping the continual increase of interest rates. Uh, in the Nigerian parlance, we have about 18.5% currently. Uh, but in other economies, um, like the developed economies, they, they are trying to still maintain it. In the, in the in the single digit figure, and they are thinking of uh, stopping uh, the uh, the continuous increase in the interest rates. Uh, inflation rates, which happen to be one of the triggers of the interest rates, is dropping now. So we are hoping that uh, we'll, we'll see the uh, interest rates also beginning to drop, uh, starting from uh, second quarter. Uh, already in the U.S., they are thinking about stopping the uh, increase, and I believe that other uh, major economies too would stop that. But generally, we are seeing a situation where uh, global markets is beginning to uh, pick up, and uh, we believe that it will be sustained even till the end of the year. Mm. Uh, b before I, I, I let you go, there is this um, saying from analysts like you that the capital market or the stock market is also uh, a source of funding, maybe for infrastructure development. Uh, which many countries have taken advantage of. Uh, are you sure of this? And um, if that is true, what sort of investments can we get, aside from money, from the exchange at this time? Uh, well, if I get your question uh, correctly, the, you know, the capital market is uh, a market where people can go into uh, companies and uh, raise funds yes. uh, for development generally. Development, uh, when, when it comes to government, government can come to the capital market, raise bonds, and uh, that's what we've, we've seen in the Nigerian parlance. They've uh, been coming uh, on a monthly basis with uh, the savings bond. And it, we, I mean, when it comes to raising also other critical uh uh, funds, they also come into the market. We have also the manufacturing companies also doing the same. Uh, the other companies to service companies, I mean, generally, you know, companies that need funds to uh, develop their, 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 uh, their, their, their industry or companies, you know, they come to the market and it's a source of cheap fund, really, compared to borrowing from uh, other establishments uh, because most of these uh, funds are equity-based except few that are maybe just uh, debts or bonds in capital uh, in, in nature. So um, generally, it, it is a market where you can easily raise funds and uh, confidence in those markets is very key because when there's confidence in the capital market, then uh, people would easily come to the market to raise funds and they'll be able to get the funds that they've come to raise. But if there's no confidence, then uh, it will be... Uh, difficult raising funds. And I think what we need is confidence. And once that confidence is there, then we'll see that uh, the market, the capital market will play its role of raising 
respond for critical infrastructures globally. Mr. Benga Ogunriola, thank you so much for your time there, Investment and Financial Advisory, for joining us live from the United Kingdom. Do enjoy the rest of your day and a profitable one, I wish you. Thank you, Tolu. Have a nice day. All right. Uh, well, Mr. Ruti Mifakaye Joe will be joining me now to understand the performance of our market here. He also joins me via Zoom. Mr. Fakai Joe, are you there now? Well, I think we need to take a break and uh, try to connect with Mr. Fakai Joe and let's talk some market figures. Don't go away. It's Business Nigeria. <music>